Hello and welcome to the Clashing of Steel. So today I'm playing Commander Sala against high tier opponents. My Commander Sala is tier 7, or at least he was back in the closed beta. So this is actually somewhat of a older video, back when there weren't any elephants and any cartridge units. Because I represent the lowest tier in this match, I'll try to be as useful as I can using one of my units to support and the other two to defend the base. I actually do mess up with this unit right here. It's because I shift my focus towards my base and forgot about my units for 3-5 to five seconds and that is when the surprise happened. But right here and right now I'm trying to be as useful as possible. Beating out bike phalanxes, keeping vision on the target so that light artillery can fire and avoiding archers right now as much as I can. Because simply the tier difference matters a lot, I need to be very careful with my actions. Being very careful where, how and what I do. I don't want to create a situation where I can be destroyed in a matter of seconds. The prescription support with Sala is actually very strong, even against the high tiers. But surviving a defensive fight or a head-to-head -head battle, that can be hard. Even here, where I for a moment lost my bearings, I took some damage, but I still managed to go around. If this Germanicus here would have actually spread, he would have done so much more against the pikes. He took so much unnecessary damage. And that's painful to watch, especially if they're on the high tiers, or at the end of the mid tiers, tier 8. He's even one tier higher than I am, and I ain't wasting my units like that. So finally the things are starting to happen in the base. My focus is to defend this player with a light artillery and a catapult. While at the same time I need to keep an eye on my unit that I sent offensive. And I think these are the sword infantry back here that are actually gonna mess me up. This is what I actually don't suggest doing. Spreading so far apart. For the playstyle, spreading your unit so widely as I did here, you need to keep switching between them. And that isn't the only job. You also have to be aware of what's going on around them. Perhaps slightly moving with your camera to see to the right, left or behind. Right here actually I wanted to pull my units to the side just in case the pikemen would try something. And by doing so I was acting right there back in my base and I didn't see these guys coming here. And this is what actually costed a lot for my team, especially those sword infantry here. I pretty much lost them and their usefulness was almost non-existent. But then again this is fun to watch. All three units charged and destroyed me while I was focusing on the base. Well we all do make mistakes, but switching between units is a full time job at this long distance. I pretty much had to keep doing it every few seconds and the few extra seconds I spent looking on my first unit pretty much costed me my third unit. So, as the game keeps evolving, I keep defending my ranged units, I take a little damage here, and so... Now that the opponents are coming towards our base, we have lost a lot of troops, we are actually somewhat outnumbered. I had to be very careful with defending. Although I did try to use my remnants here to support the fighting infantries, it still wasn't much of a use and, well, they had vengeance active so I needed to pull back out. For now there is a small breeding room in our base. We have time to regroup, set ourselves up once again. But unfortunately we have lost a lot of troops and our situation isn't great. So my main focus is still to defend the catapult. Because everybody usually hunts the catapult or the light artillery or something. So that makes it an ideal spot to wait for opponents. And especially now that the spearmen have come. Fortunately, this sword infantry at tier 9 here is Germanicus, and he's playing armored Roman swordsmen, which are gonna pay out heavily. Pretty much, they're gonna help us win the match. While I do fight here, there was a small interesting situation on the other side of the base as well, where I engaged the other spearmen. So, let's take a look at that. So, this is pretty much where the spearmen got into our base, and I'm building up the stakes right here and I actually do it really well. I do force them into it a bit 
but unfortunately he still does destroy them. But because I'm playing Sulla, Fortify, Whip and Prescription usually give me enough to withstand most melee infantries. That does not include Germanicus or the Stakes, but most other. And because they don't use Phalanx, I can withstand them even better on the count of their low attack. And even here I'm trying to give a little support to the cavalry and the melee infantry. But still that situation is pretty much lost. And now they do activate the phalanx, but because the Roman infantry evolves after the tier 6 actually, they are highly resilient. And using Sulla with them is incredible. So here I'm bringing back one of my sword infantries, just to finish off these higher tier opponents. I want to be very careful, I want to have minimal losses. Although he's being highly offensive, I just want to make sure I can finish him off quickly without any disturbances. Although I did leave Germanicus with his tier 9 armored uh, Roman infantry, he's going to withstand those spearmen. Although he has taken a lot of moral damage, he can still withstand them. And as soon as I'm done, I'm gonna rush to his aid. And because the tier 9 sword infantry ignored me, I'm not having any troubles with them. Just sending units in, in a blob. Come on, tier 9s, please. How do some players get so far? I... I just don't know. Although my Germanicus got here routed, I still went to their aid, because I wanted to make sure that he gets through. He's one of the strongest units we have left. And now that he's far enough, I'm pulling back. But uh, because I'm in the same situation he was, I have to keep engaging, otherwise I'm gonna lose. Otherwise my morale will shake and I might be routed. Just because of my prescription support, Germanicus can do so much. And now I'm sending my unit to flank. I mean, they're all blobbing into me. None of them have had the idea of going around the buildings to flank me. Even if they would send a single unit, they could shift the balance of the game. They could win it, but because they're all so naive, and God knows how they got so far, they're gonna suffer the consequences. Because of the whip, my Sulla went around these buildings really fast. And now, I'm blocking them in into this uh, narrow street. Actually, it's not that narrow, it's pretty wide. But still, I'm holding them here and forcing them to fight on two fronts. So you can see that the opponents don't have armored tier 9 Roman infantries, and we do. Although the tier 9s that are armored do have more damage and more defense, they aren't as mobile. And because these players here don't know how to use their mobility to their advantage, they're losing. They got uh, put into a situation where they can't withstand. And we do have new friends coming in from the opponent's base. I need to be very careful here. It is best if I would engage them. They are Vercingetorix, and if they use Defiance, and I take all the damage, the Germanicus will have a chance against them. I mean, Germanicus can destroy him with the Vengeance, but uh, considering he's our only big damage dealer, and he's our only strongest unit left, I have to soak this up. Basically, my unit is more expendable than his, and also my commander is more defensive than Germanicus. Well, maybe not with this tier difference, but you get the overall idea. So this is actually what I'm talking about often enough when I refer to the medium or the high tier. The tier differences there don't matter as much, but they do matter. I wish to tier higher opponents, I wish to two tiers higher opponents. I'm not saying I did great against them, but I did all I could, and thanks to that, we have a chance. If it would have been the same type of situation like it is right here, with everybody being like two tiers lower, me being tier 5, opponents being tier 6, 7 or perhaps even 8, this situation would have not gone down like this. We would have definitely lost it. So now that the ground is burning and they were hoping to fry me a bit, I'm pulling out. They're damaging their own men and maybe slightly my team member as well. But now we are in the lead thanks to that blob that was here. We're just going to finish off their infantry, spearmen and swordsmen. Also these two lonely pikemen here. But this is pretty much it. I also made two pictures of this engagement here. How it started and how it ended. 
As you see it here, the tier difference does matter. Although my opponents were two tiers higher than I was, but I witched due to defiance and after its end, I actually made some decent damage to him. I'm not saying that all engagements against high tier opponents are gonna be this great like it was for me here, but I just wanted to show that on the higher tiers you have a better chance against stronger opponents than compared to the lower tiers. So as you see, I do can make some difference with my two tiers lower units and two tiers lower commander. Don't expect something for nothing. Try to support your team, try to support your team members. Best not waste your units because you're in the low end of a high tier battle. And the mistakes you make might get punished real harshly, considering that most opponents are stronger than you. Anyways, don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching.